And I should say something here, and for anybody watching the recorded material, what I'm about to say should not be viewed as personal advice or constituting a guarantee of any sort. That having been said, firstly, we know, because we've seen it in history, that whenever an economy hits the skids, central banks ride in and they cut interest rates. And that's exactly what's happened this time round. The price of long-term borrowing drops. And we're seeing interest rates in Germany as low as 2.38% per annum. We also know that central banks cut those rates in an effort to stimulate us to go and spend our hard-earned money. In turn, this drives prices. So CPI, core price index, inflation. So if we know that central banks and governments are actively trying to encourage inflation, and we know that perhaps we can borrow long-term capital, that it makes perfect sense to do that and use it. After all, it's what banks, brokerage houses, professional investors do all the time. For us, what it should mean, if we can, is to look at bricks and mortar in cities like Munich and Frankfurt, where we can see rental yields, and we know that we can't be outbuilt from that point of view. The fact is, because we've seen it in history, that whenever inflation rears its ugly head, holding fixed borrowing against an inflating asset has always been the wise thing to do. Now I say, if we can, because unfortunately not everybody in this room will have the personal circumstances that allows them to play that game. So secondly, what are we looking at? Well, that's a little bit more complicated. We know that Western central banks have cut rates to the bone. But it wasn't enough. Nowhere near enough. In 2008, the Federal Reserve Board pumped into the US economy $1.7 trillion. I'll repeat that for you. $1.7 trillion to bail out banks, insurance groups, and to buy its own government bonds. But even this is not enough. So just last week, the Federal Reserve Board announced QE2. And no, they're not going on a cruise. This is quantitative easing round two. An additional $60 billion in state aid. And this will predominantly go in to buy its own government bonds. Now, you might simply think of that as being unemployed, going to your bank, borrowing 10 grand, and paying your wages from it until it runs out. Might feel good for a little bit, right? But you know there's going to be a price to pay. And we know from history that when any government engages in this sort of wholesale money printing, the value of its currency will fall. And that is exactly what we are seeing. What this in turn does is to drive investors out of that currency. And they go and look for higher yielding currencies and economies. For us, that could mean emerging markets. And here we look at the Indian rupee against the US dollar. <coughs> and that says quite a lot. What this wave of money does to those economies, however, is to drive up prices for basic goods and services. This in turn, and we're seeing this already, leads to wage demands. Now, a lot of us in this room have probably been quite used to these areas exporting deflation to us through cheap labor. That's coming to an end, folks. They're going to be exporting inflation to us. So we better get used to that idea. Now, we should all know by now what tends to happen to any economy, any company, when everybody wants to jump on the same bandwagon, right? The wheels are going to drop off. 
But that's not today's story. That's probably 2011, as far as I'm concerned. In the shorter term, there's another play we can make, and it is the inflation play. What we need to look for is things that inflate. So agriculture is something we should look at. Wheat, corn, soya, sugar. You might not need an iPad, but you definitely need a meal on the table in the evening. We should also be looking at oil. Even in the dark days of this Great Recession, oil didn't get much below $70 a barrel, but now it's back up into the high 80s. What this means for oil exporting economies is, frankly, they're doing well, and I'm buying them. And thirdly, we should definitely be looking at gold, silver, and platinum which has always been a sensible play in times of inflation and a weak dollar. Has anybody been buying gold the last 10 years? Only me. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in extraordinary times. But then again, we always have. And I guess we always will. Opportunity surrounds us our entire lives, and all it asks is for us to look for it and take action with what we find. So in closing this evening, let me leave you with optimism. One of the great strengths of our system and by that I mean the human system, is its capacity for what's been called creative destruction. The tearing down of the old in preparation for the building of the new, and perhaps the better. It is the same system of fear and greed, rise and fall, boom, bubble and bust. It is the human system. And as far as systems go, it gives me warm and fuzzy feelings because I can see in history how predictable it is. It is the same system that has written our history, created our today and will build our tomorrow. Someone once observed that tomorrow is where we will spend the rest of our lives, so we better be aware of it. Well, before I hand over to Stephanie for the Q&A, I hope I've been able to increase your awareness of what may lie in our tomorrow. And if I've taken away that nagging feeling of having to say, K sera sera, whenever you think about tomorrow, then really, our time this evening has been well spent.